before we begin, I wanted to remind everybody that we're recording this session and that this is going to be interactive. So it's not just us talking. There are a few questions that had come in earlier uh, during the registration. So I'm going to ask our panelists uh, those questions, but if you feel at any point that you want to join in, you want to add something, share feedback, or even ask a question, we'll definitely get to that either during the session or after. Uh, we're joined today by Patrick Avalanche, who's our Regional Sales Manager, uh, TNA North America. And I'd like to welcome our special guests, Bill Benzel, Project Engineer at Campbell Snacks, and Mari Van Dyne, who is CEO of World Food Products. Thank you, Bill and Mari, for joining us today. And uh, once again, thank you for being patient. And we're all excited to listen to both of you as you share your insights. Um, I'd like to start by talking about how the need to modernize and automate uh, has become more urgent during the pandemic. When many manufacturers have had to really overhaul production lines and start producing bigger bags to stock pantries. This question really is to both Bill and Mari that how do your companies uh, adapt to those demands for higher volumes and different pack sizes? And what were the challenges that you had to overcome to meet uh, consumer demand along the way? Bill, if we could start with you first, please. Sure, thank you. Um, can you hear me? Yes, absolutely, okay. thank you. Yeah, something happened in my video, so I had to take that down, but uh, so thank you. Um, so to meet demand um, in the times that we're currently in, uh, we've seen our demand increase and um, that really leads us down one of two different paths. Um, one would be to hire more people um, or the other would be to automate. Mm -hmm. um, we currently have between 60 and 80 open positions. So um, we quickly decided to go the route of automation um, to, meet, to meet demand. Um, we do, um, at our site, we have approximately 40 TNA baggers and um, they run, they may run the same product uh, uh, per oven line uh, where we produce um, pretzels or tortilla chips, um, but they may have different bag sizes um, for each, for each um, bagging machine. So that's really how we've um, addressed that. No, thank you. And Mari, if you could um, add your perspective as well, please. Yeah, we're, we're, we are in the same boat. You know, we have to really take a hard look at you know, the labor environment, especially through this crucial time with the COVID uh, you know, uh, issues going on and you know, um, being able to even get the people to the job site comfortably and, and um, practically uh, in order to meet all the safety regulations. So uh, that, that pretty much forced us into better automation, more automation and so forth. And that's, we kind of went uh, in a different route is uh, we're, we're new to the TNA family of uh, machines and um, really opened our eyes up to a lot of different things that we can do with them um, since we've had them here. But we always have done larger pack sizes. And that's been a big uh, push for us. And we started getting into the um, more uh, smaller type you know, package for single serves for serving um, you know, schools and prison systems and FEMA programs so for the disaster reliefs and so forth. And uh, that forced us into some higher speeds that we needed to uh, put together. And that's where TNA stepped up and really helped us uh, evolve into that new, new process. Yeah. Thank you for that. You mentioned, you know, about students, schools and, you know, prisons. That's catering to not just demand, but diverse consumer needs. And we all hear or read about the surge in demand and manufacturers being under pressure. But could you both speak a little bit about your own experience on what was the process uh, that helped you to cater to these demands? Bill, if you'd like to go first. Uh, what has, uh, what's been the process to help us meet dem these demands? Yes, yes. Okay, um, so with being a capital engineer, um, you know, it starts with um, working with operations and 
um, determining um, the demand that they're seeing. Um, and from there, we can kind of justify the um, means of purchasing new equipment. And then obviously, um, quoting install and startup. Um, so in one particular case that I have uh, recently, um, we installed some TNA bagging machines and working with um, our TNA salesperson, Patrick, um, for our one and a half ounce um, mini pretzel, uh, the TNA bagging machines are capable of running speeds of 130 to 140 bags per minute. Um, we are currently running at 95 bags per minute. So you can see the, um, that we're running the TNAs uh, not, not as fast as we could. So with the project that I have being put in, um, it will go from 95 bags per minute to 121 bags per minute. So we're encroaching a little bit more into the speeds where um, we feel more comfortable. And a lot of that is due to uh, downstream, equ downstream equipment not being able to keep up. Mm -hmm. um, so with that being said, um, after I install my project, which is on schedule to be started December 7th, um, we're going to see anywhere between, uh, well, on one product, we'll see between 11 and 12% increase. And on another product, we'll see between a 26 and 27% increase. No, um, good luck with the project, and I do hope that you get to meet your goals, and uh, TNA is able to assist you with that. Mari, what about uh, the processes that you followed? We were in somewhat of the same boat again. We we um, as we got into the um, single serve pack, we ended up getting we have machines that do the bigger bags, and as you bring them down to a one ounce, uh, one and a half ounce pack. We we're only hitting speeds of 45 to 50 bags a minute. And so uh, we started looking around. We you know, just testing, you know, touching my toe in the water on this a little bit. We ended up finding a used uh, TNA bagger, brought it in, and uh, immediately started hitting the 110, 120 pack a minute, which opened our eyes up to uh, where we needed to go. Uh, in the demand of FEMA and the, and the school and so forth, and at that time of the COVID, and some of the companies not able to supply, we had a lot of pressure on us to get product out. So TNA stepped up and found us uh, a couple of new bag baggers, uh, a similar type pack, uh, the same thing, and brought it in and got us going in like 14 days, and we were able to um, comfortably, you know, commit to a, you know more product per week um, to get out for these guys, uh, and it worked out real well for us. No, oh, thank you. So in the midst of this high demand, and this is again uh, to both Bill and Mari, that how do you ensure quality control? How do, you, how do you make sure that the product in the bag is as fresh as possible when you're trying to meet high demand? Bill, if you could start with you, please. Sure, sure. So um, the way that we run our ovens, um, we really did. We really rely on the TNA bagging machines to 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 pull all the poundage that we produce from our ovens. Um, so the quality the quality side of that is um, we have um, as as every again I I standardized with Patrick um, the TNA uh, bagging machines and scales that we're going to be purchasing going forward um, to include uh, metal detection. Um, code daters, um, barcode readers. Um, former former removal um, mechanisms to help from the safety side. Yeah. Um, and then we're also going to start um, pulling information um, from the TNAs for data collection purposes. Um, and that that'll really help with the quality side. So from the quality side, it helps with metal detection, obviously, that helps with making sure that the film that's on the machine matches the product that we're going to be putting in the bag. <laughs> um, and then the date code side of that um, is all uh, from the quality quality perspective. Yeah, uh, thank you for that, Bill. 
Mari, what was your experience uh, with quality control and how did you manage that? Yeah, we, we have the same thing as far as in the, in the um, metal detection, um, you know, code dating and so forth. Um, and uh, time frames when it's packaged so we can go back to different pallets and so where they're, they're coded out uh, in the package as well as on the cases. Uh, so if we have any issues, we can go back to it. But, you know, and we're in the same boat as we're roasting product and being able to bring it in and get it to the machines as quickly as we can and put it in a bag, nitrogen flush, and uh, having the right material, packaging material to hold the nitrogen as long as we can and um, keep that product as fresh as we can uh, on the shelf with, uh, for as long as it has to be. Uh, more in the school and the prisons, doesn't, it's pretty much taken care of real quickly, so we don't have an issue with that. But anytime we get a self-stable product, that's what we're looking for. Yeah, thank you for that, both of you. Patrick, uh, Bill, I'd like to bring you in uh, at this point in the discussion. Bill and Mari have both spoken about the specific demands that they had to meet, the challenges, the processes, and you know, they just, we discussed quality control and, and what they did to overcome all of this. I wanted to ask you if you could share how machine efficiency, design, automation, all of this can help simplify or even make the process better. Yes, Bindu, I mean, to take back from uh, what Marty and Bill said, you know, um, simplicity of the equipment, flexibility, um, integration of all the equipment. We're looking at quality, um, quick changeovers. Um, with the TNA solutions, we, we have a complete integrated systems where the scale, uh, metal detection, decoder are all integrated with the bagger. So it's really much uh, recipe driven, which means you know that the operator can change from one format to another, changing the, the forming tube, put the firm on, and then select a, a product and everything is set up. So uh, you eliminate uh, human errors and that's a big plus for uh, getting quality products, uh, avoiding uh, waste and making sure that you can get uh, the most out of uh, your packaging systems. So it really is, it is important. You know, as um, Bill said, you know, they, uh, they want to get um, all the poundage out of the oven in a bag. And, you know, you, you can't really stop the process you need to you need to be able to take that product put it into a bag if you need to change format from one to another it has to happen very quickly uh, and the integration uh, the design of the equipment uh, is very important in that matter yeah thank you for that uh, patrick B bill you you work with multiple types of food products right which means that changeover can also be a struggle at time uh, how do you deal with that so we, um, we have a number of lines and we have, I'm gonna say on average between three and four baggers per line. So um, we make both pretzels and tortilla chips um, at our site. So um, we can make the same pro pretzel product and um, on the three to four different um, bagging machines, we can run different size bags. So um, if we need to take one down for a changeover, it is kind of crucial um, because uh, at, on one side of it, we do have flexibility, but on the other side, um, as Patrick had mentioned, you know, um, the pretzels keep coming. <laughs> the product keeps coming. So, um, you know, changeover time um, is, is difficult. Um, for us, but um, TNA has made it easier with with the um, the, the um, quick change formers, and um, also from the safety side, uh, we have the um, uh, mechanism that pulls the former out of the machine and makes it um, easier, safer for us to handle. Thank you for that, Bill. And you know, we we uh, this session. Uh, we spoke about, we said that, you know, reducing total cost of oven ownership is something that we want to definitely look at. And I'm sure that for you, lowering that is another imperative in this current environment. So how do you, how do you address that? Actually, I want to throw this open to all three of you, Bill, Patrick, and Mari, if you can just come in and share your views on this. 
um, so cost of ownership. Um, mm -hmm. We, again, uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have about 40 TNA bagging machines. Yeah. Um, they have been very reliable to us. Uh, that's why we keep going that route. Um, and, you know, the improvements that you've made along the way um, helped me standardize uh, what kind of machines I'm going to be purchasing in the future. Um, we see very little issues with uh, the TNAs. Um, I would say probably the biggest part is uh, the, wear, the wear parts, you know, your jaws mm -hmm. and, and anvils and such. Um, but uh, that's kind of what I have for that. Okay, great. Yeah, I mean, uh, Bindu, you know, in terms of um, the way the machines are designed, um, you know, we have very little mechanical uh, movement uh, using the pure rotary motion. Um, you know, if you compare it to a, a lot of other equipment uh, out there in the marketplace, you know, we yeah. might be at uh, less than half the moving parts uh, of some of our uh, competitors. So it is, it makes a big difference when you, you have to maintain the machine, keep it running, uh, that simplicity, of, of, of mechanic and, and, and design gives a lot more reliability to the, to the equipment, which gives you, you know, easier for the uh, maintenance team and the operation team. So it's, it is a, a, a great advantage to, to be able to be simple. Yeah, and, uh, and how crucial, uh, Patrick, is flexibility in lowering uh, total cost of ownership? Yeah, I mean, the, the, there's a great advantage because, um, you know, the, the machine can handle several back sizes. Uh, and you can do very quick changeovers. So that you, you can go from one uh, format to another, you know, in a, in a minimal time. Uh, and that means you don't have to have, you know, a, more machines to handle the set different sizes. You can do it with one piece of equipment. And the quick changeover allows you to avoid piling up product, uh, you know, somewhere else because you cannot pack it. Um, so yeah, it, it is really uh, uh, critical to be able to do all those you know, Bill mentioned uh, the quick um, uh, offload of the former, we, and that allows you to take the former out of the way in a safe and, um, and gentle way. And, you know, all those um, quick changeover, the, the integration allows you to be flexible and quick changeovers at the same time. Yeah. Thank you. Mari, is there anything you'd like to share from your experience on this aspect? I think from from the equipment side of it, you know, you have a lot of a lot of um, situations that can help you with your cost of uh, equipment. You know, naturally, you know, the longevity of the equipment, the speeds of the equipment, changeover is a big crucial thing. I mean, for us, it's one you know one line, one item. You know, when we have flavor profiles, we're changing the clean downs. Everything means a lot. Package size changeovers. Um, you know, the wear and tear on the equipment and that type of stuff all, all goes to that uh, process of the cost of the equipment for longevity, so. Yeah, it's a good point for Marty, you know, you when you don't only have the packaging to worry about, you've got the, the, the seasoning, you've got the distribution system, you've got your processing equipment. So you want to take away, you don't want to take away from those other uh, pieces of equipment. So you minimize the, the, the involvement in the packaging, gives you more time to look after uh, you know, your changeovers of seasoning and all the rest you have to do when you change over uh, from one format to another. Yeah, and if I can add on to that, um, you know, our, our operations are 24-7, and we do bake into our um, production schedule changeovers, but, um, you know, if we can reduce that changeovers, that's more product that we could get out. Yes, very good, yeah. Yeah. You know, this past year has been a lot of learnings for all of us. Uh, Bill and Mari, to both of you specifically, you know, what are some of the swift actions that brands can take to adapt when the market conditions change so swiftly? Bill, if we could, you know, hear your perspective first. Sure. Um, Again, we have a number of oven lines and, and uh, many different types of products that we, that we run. Um, machines that have fewer um, moving parts uh, helps. Um, training staff um, is very helpful. I know, you know, with having TNAs, we get accustomed we get accustomed to their methodology, their process for operation, and um, we find that our um, operators pick up pretty quickly on that. 
Marty, what has it been like for you? What are the some of the swift actions that you think that brands can adapt to when market conditions change? I, I, I would have to say the same as that. It's, it's, yeah. it's in the quality of the people that have run them, number one. And number two is the simplicity of the equipment. And that's what we found um, starting to work with these TNA machines that they are simple to operate and the operators love them. Um, which makes a big difference when they when they feel comfortable with the machine, they can do the changeovers quickly. They can uh, adapt for pretty easily. Um, it, it makes a big difference for us to pick up the, you know, what we can do uh, get accomplished. So. Yeah, thank you for that, both of you. Before I open the um, floor to audience questions, Patrick, I just wanted to come back to you for a minute there. We heard uh, from Bill and Marty what brands are doing, but what do you think that uh, TNA can do or TNA is doing to help our customers stay agile at this time? You know, um, it's all about, you know, giving the right solution, um, choosing the right uh, equipment for, 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 the, for the lines. Uh, there are several options from TNA. We don't only, you know, we, we look at package and solutions. We don't just look at a piece of equipment. So we, we focus on offering, okay, what, what is the customer looking for? And we can integrate the, the, the packaging system to the conveying system to the, to the seasoning system. So it's a complete package solution we're looking at. Uh, training is very important. You know, we, we, um, you know, we want to make sure the, the equipment is simple so we can uh, train um, our customers and the customer can train their teams uh, very well and easily. Uh, we've recently launched, um, you know, online training that's uh, starting to to um, to become more and more popular, and I think that's going to really help um, everybody getting the most out of their equipment. Because you know, it's not only speed, it's not only performance, it's um, it's you know uh, low waste, it's um, be, be getting the most out of the equipment, quick changeovers, making sure um, everybody understands what's the best uh, process to operate the equipment. So the training. Uh, we, we really want to put a, an effort on training and making sure uh, the equipment is used at its best performance. Yeah. Thank you for that, Patrick. Uh, Bill and Marty, Patrick, thank you all uh, for answering my questions uh, patiently. And uh, your these discussions have been insightful, I'm sure, to all of us. I'd like to um, ask the audience now if you'd like to ask any questions of the three panelists, please fee uh, feel free to do so now. You can unmute your mics or you can you know, put it in the chat section. Hi, this is Anne-Marie Mohan at Packaging World. Thank you all for the presentation. Um, I'm wondering if Bill and Marty could both uh, tell me where your facilities are located, where you have this equipment, and how many uh, TNA baggers in total have you installed since COVID began? Okay, so um, the answer is it's South Central Pennsylvania. And um, we currently have um, about 40 uh, TNA row bag twos or threes. And um, since um, COVID started, we had replaced three of them. I'm sorry, did you get that? Yeah, we did, we did, thank you. Yes, Marty, thank you, Bill. Yeah, yeah. same question for yes. you from Anne. Yes, we're from Manteca, California. Um, we've had since COVID uh, three packaging machine, TNA packaging machines put in since that time. And do you have your answers? I do, except um, I didn't hear where Bill said he was, they are from. I thought I heard central Pennsylvania, but something kind of interrupted. Yeah, but, Hanover, Pennsylvania. Hanover, okay, great. Yes, so I've got my answers, thank you. Are there any more questions for our panelists today? We said we wanted to keep the se session interactive, so please feel free to ask questions, share your views, your thoughts, even your own experiences. Bindu, I can I can add on to some of the you know items that we had discussed. Um, so back in 
2017, we had installed um, a new uh, row flow system. Um, and yeah. the justification to that was um, a breakage of product. And since we've um, installed those, we've seen a, um, a minor decrease in product. Um, but I don't want that don't to be taken lightly be because lightly. with as much product as we produce in a year's time, um, that's uh, many, many pounds. So um, just wanted to add that for everybody's sake. Oh, no. Thank you for that, Bill. I have one question, which was, you know, maintenance kept coming up a few times when we were uh, discussing earlier. Can, can I do a few, uh, offer some examples of uh, how proactive has TNA been or instrumental in helping, you know, reduce uh, um, time dedicated to maintenance? Sure. Um, really, the only thing that I see from the maintenance side, um, again, is just wear parts that, uh, um, you know, that uh, they run out um, over time. And also, sometimes we have to pause the machine for um, hole punches for some of our um, items. Um, but that's that's not on TNA. That's really on our, our side of things. Well, that's good to know, Bill. <laughs> Mari, uh, what about your experience? I haven't had a, a lot of experience with any trouble with them at this time. We've only had them mm -hmm. for like six, seven months. So um, at this point, it seems to be pretty maintenance free. That's a good answer, too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, I, I mean, I don't, I have some other questions as well. How do you help uh, customers calculate total cost of ownership? I mean, do you have a formula or, you know, how do you work with customers to calculate the total cost of ownership? And this is for you, Patrick, really. I'm unmuting myself because I was trying to be quiet. <laughs> uh, no, welcome to Matt. Not, not today. It's not going to happen, right? Okay. <laughs> not today. No, we, I mean, we, we do, uh, you know, when we look at those um, kind of um, approach uh, with our customers, uh, really, we work very closely to understand uh, the product, the throughput, um, what's you know the the overall package we we're trying to offer. So there's a we look at the return on investment on some of the lines and what's going to be um, the, the the benefits, the redu uh, reduction in waste, uh, reduction in uh, the cost of um, maintenance, spare parts, cons consumables. Um, really, you know the, the the efficiency of the equipment, uh, downtime reduction. Uh, more uptime on the line. So the overall picture, you know, we look at the many uh, different uh, parameters to see how, where, and depending on the operation and the, the different lines and different products, we're looking at where are the different parts of the line where we can gain uh, substantial, you know, um, and uh, have more savings. So it could be, you know, uh, it can be flexibility. It can be uh, being able to uh, achieve several SKUs on one machine with quick changeovers. Uh, it can be just you know one uh, machine that can run a lot of poundage um, out of a line uh, because you know and take all the the extra um, production from a big oven like in Bill's case when you know we have a, a very large very large ovens and we want to get all the pounds of that oven uh, avoid breakages in the equipment as in the product. Um, Bill mentioned um, uh, saving with the raw flow. Uh, distribution system from TNA, but also we also have some tricks within the packaging system to minimize minimize waste, uh, so uh, and breakages. So there is there is many uh, parameters uh, which varies uh, from product to product. If we run a nut product, a pretzel product, a potato chip product, there are so many uh, uh, parameters we look at, uh, and we like to work very closely with uh, with our partners to to define yeah. those. So there's really no cookie cutter model. It's you know customized based on the customer's needs, right? Correct. Yes. No. There's not one recipe fits all. Yeah. Uh, it's, all. Um, you know, we like to tell all the solutions to to each client and make yeah. sure that uh, they get you know whatever is required. And you know, it could be different scales, uh, design, different uh, metal detection device. Uh, there's different, so many options. Uh, On machine seasoning, mainline seasoning. Uh, we use vibratory motion conveyors. Uh, 
uh, horizontal motion conveyors, depending on what the product and the application is, there are several uh, ways to offer the best possible solution. Thank you for that, Patrick. And I'm conscious of time. I think it's uh, 5 p.m. Uh, Bill and Mari have been on this call for more than an hour. Bill, Mari, thank you so much for those insights. Thank you for staying with us for this, this long and for joining us on this platform. Um, uh, we will be posting uh, this video on the TNA Connects platform, so it'll be available for everybody who wants to access this. If you feel that there is somebody that you'd like to share it with who could, you know, who it could be valuable to, please feel free to go on to the TNA Connects platform. The video should be up in the next 24 hours and you can share with them. We also post regular updates about TNA, about our products, any innovation on our social platforms. So you can connect with us on LinkedIn, Twitter or Facebook. We have two more sessions coming up this week on processing and seasoning. So you can find out more about these sessions on this platform. And we'd be happy if you could all join us again tomorrow and day after. Thank you all for being patient. Sorry about the technical difficulties that happened earlier on in the session, but please have a great day, great evening, whichever part of the world you're joining in from. Thank you so much.